welcome to Community Conversations. I'm your host, KK Konishiro. With 42 schools and over 3,000 employees at the Fremont Unified School District, there's bound to be some changes from year to year. Each new school year brings a new and talented group of educators and administrators to the district, and this year, FUSD welcomes four new principals. Three you might recognize, and one newcomer is to, and to Fremont. Joining us today to talk about their new roles in the district is Hopkins Junior High School Principal Corey Brown, Meadows Elementary School Principal Susan Guerrero, Mission Valley Ele Elementary School Principal Denise Mapelli, and Cabrilla Elementary School Principal David Thornley. And sitting with me, co-hosting today, is Assistant Superintendent Dr. Raul Zamora. Thank you so much for being here. Thank you. So first of all, congratulations. This must be exciting. Now, I know you three have been with the school district for a while, but Susan, where are you from? Uh, most recently, I'm from Santa Clara, well, but welcome. I've worked in several different school districts and actually used to work down the street from here in Newark. <laughs> nice. Well, welcome. Thank you. Great. So, now that you've had your title for a few weeks now, how does it feel? <laughs> Who wants to start? It still feels sort of surreal. Mm -hmm. um, it, not as scary, mm -hmm. which is good, Yes, um, but also exciting because we're still trying to figure it out, so. Yeah. No manual? No, no. <laughs> it's like, no manual. No. There's, um, you know, the, the predecessors, the mentors that we have mm -hmm. had have helped prepare for things, but there's just day-to-day -day stuff that, you know, wasn't in the credentialing class. Mm -hmm. And um, I know for me, I'm at the school I've been at for the last couple years, so knowing the staff, knowing half of the students um, the has been a nice way. Knowing many of the parents is a nice way to transition in. I know for some of the others, they're in brand new mm -hmm. schools and attendance areas, but that's helped. Okay, so Denise, what school were you in before? Uh, last year I was at Forest Park, and okay. then before that at Brookvale Elementary for 17 years. So, wow. Yeah. Okay. And then what school were you in? So I'm, I'm like Corey, I was the assistant principal at Cabrillo last year, so I had an opportunity to develop those relationships okay, with the families and the teachers. So, you know, moving into the um, principal position has been a nice transition. Okay, good. Now, Susan, were you a principal before or assistant principal? Or? I've actually been a principal for, this is my 16th year. Okay, so, so I'm being going a principal into, is not new. Into Mattos, uh, not as a new principal, but right. being new to the school, and okay. it's a fabulous place to be. Okay. Now, was this job what you dreamed it would be so far? Is it everything you <laughs> expected or more? <laughs> <laughs> more. <laughs> I, you know, having I only spent one year as an assistant principal. Okay. Um, but fortunately for me, because last year our principal was also new, mm -hmm. so we did a lot together. So oh, I was able to have a little bit of an insight into a principal's world. But um, I think from a kid perspective, it's more. Mm -hmm. Um, from some of the other things, it's quite surprising, but yeah. it's all good. Okay. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a really good thing. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. Anyone else? I was very excited about, you know, when I started as a, as a teacher, and, and my father, who was in administration, always wanted me to go into administration, and I said, no, I, I want to be a teacher. That's what I trained for. Um, and fortunately, like Corey said, you know, when you have excellent mentors mm -hmm. who show you another way, um, I wanted to you know, join that team, those leaders who are able to really make significant differences. So it's, it's one of those things where Chuck Graves, who's principal at uh, Mission San Jose Elementary, we're texting each other probably at five in the morning, and we're like, we can't believe we get paid to do this. You know, it's, <laughs> we have a lot of fun. That's great. Yeah. Was it hard to go from a teaching job with the kids and now you're an administrator? Was that a difficult transition for you? Or was it easy? I know you had some of you had mentors, which is mm -hmm. great, but you still have to give up dealing with the kids one on one now. Is that a mm -hmm. difficult transition? That first shift for me um, when I left the classroom, I actually um, left to come down to the district office here um, about the same time as <laughs> Denise <laughs> and, and David um, <laughs> as a literacy coach for the district. And that was. It was a shock after 10 years of teaching English at American High School to not have that kid interaction right. every single day. Um, so for me, going back to a school site to be an administrator meant having kids around me every day again. And so it was a nice transition back after a huge couple years of, of learning and working with these two and a, a few others down here. It was a great time. You know, we, we had a lot of fun down here. But I remember there came a point where I went to see Dr. Morris. And I said, 
I've been here two years. I want to go back to school. I want to be with the kids. I want to tie kids' shoelaces again. <laughs> you know, it's just like I knew that was where I belonged. I really enjoyed my work at the district office. We had a fabulous time, but I love being at a school site. Okay. And you've been a principal for a while, but when you first changed from teaching to become an administrator, was that difficult for you 16 years ago? In, in some ways, but I also had many different roles. I was a literacy coordinator, the gate. Okay. You know, the gate coordinator, mm -hmm. um, a, a staff developer, uh, had so many different roles that by the time I went into administration I was really ready to do that, but I was also ready to relearn how to teach as an administrator mm -hmm. because you go into that role and you're supporting teachers. Right. And for myself, I'm first and foremost a teacher, so I think I gained a, a, a better and more, um, more rich understanding of of how to support teaching mm -hmm. when I was no longer in that role. Right. And that's important to this job. Absolutely. Now, Dr. Zamora, when you're looking for new principals, is, it, is there an assumption that the assistant automatically becomes the principal when that principal retires or goes away or for whatever reason? Or does everyone have to apply for the job inside and from the outside? Exactly. So all, we get all the applicants to apply and that's not an assumption that automatically if you're an assistant principal you'll become okay. the principal of that school. But I can tell you that our, our crew here, they're fabulous. They hit the ground off just running. Um, they were able to understand the school culture, the school community, and really embrace the stakeholders so that they can get leadership into their school mm -hmm. and get that in that excitement and that energy starting right off from the beginning of the school year. I think the process that we have, you, you see what we have in front of you and it, it speaks volumes of what they're doing day in and day out with the, with the staff, with the students, just like uh, David mentioned, you know, coming and talking to the students and having that, that connection. Mm -hmm. you, each and every one of our candidates here, they really bring a certain aspect that we're looking for for Fremont. And this is what makes each school unique because of the leaders at the school. And they really bring that really out when they're out with the, right. with the students. It's just really exciting to see. Okay. Now for some of us viewers who don't know the different, um, Describe the uniqueness of your school. And we're going to start with you. What's so unique about your school versus her school, his school, and her school? What's what For our viewing audience who don't know anything about our school district, tell them. So we're part of the mission attendance area, actually. I think Denise and yeah. I both. So her students will feed into to Hopkins Junior High School where I'm at. And our kids go to Mission San Jose High School. Um, we are very incredibly lucky to have families that... Um, put academics as a priority right. in their lives and it is awesome to be at a school where that interest level, that engagement um, is, is just part of the conversations that are happening at home. We have large turnouts at parent nights and um, you know when we need volunteers we have a real community. Just um, last week we had a couple of um, students that the counselor identified as being in need of having a computer at their house. Yeah. and. Um, she worked to get the internet turned on at those locations wow. and then I sent out an email to our parent community and within 15 minutes I had a number of responses and the next morning there were two brand new computers mm. at, delivered mm. to the school to give nice. to those families um, from uh, parents that wanted to remain anonymous just knowing that right. they could help someone else that was part of that school community. Um, with that there does come some challenges. We have a lot of students that are under a lot of pressure Stress and stress to compete academically and to you know try and keep up with their peers and we do a, as much as we can to de-emphasize um, academic competition mm -hmm. between things yeah. but um, it's it's a, a, a good problem to have and an excellent school to be at. Yeah. Denise do you agree? I absolutely and um, you know it is nice because you do have families that step up but it's also a little challenging trying to maintain the balance for our right. children. Right. Um, we're also very fortunate because we have four um, special day classes on campus so we get children from other schools throughout the district in and um, something that actually happened today I was called over because we mainstream our all of our SDC students with general education students for science and PE and today the PE teacher one of the PE teachers called me over and said you have to come and look at this and our general education students were noticing that some of the SDC students were struggling with there's working on shooting like for basketball oh. and 
the, the, these kids took it upon themselves to just step in and, and work with them. And wow. y you know, it's just kindness and this compassion. And yeah. so while we do have um, you know, very, very involved families, it's what you see in these kids and what they bring Absolutely. every day that just, you know, it's wonderful. It's yeah, it's very <laughs> exciting. Mm -hmm. David? You know, it kind of strikes me. I, I, I'm thinking of it now as I listening to the stories. I was kindergartner at Mission Valley. I went to junior <laughs> high at Hopkins. <laughs> My first teaching job was at Mass. Um, Cabrillo um, is a family. We're 450 kids. Um, we're very tight knit. Um, being at a small school like that presents all kinds of wonderful opportunities. Um, large EL population. Um, my kids are great kids. I have teachers who are incredibly fantastic. I, I look to Cabrillo as being a destination school for, for kids, for parents, and for teachers. Um, it really is a learning lab. Um, I love being at a school where the community wants to be so heavily involved with not only the children's education, but with the development of the community of the school. Yeah. So I'm, I'm, I feel very lucky to be at Cabrillo. It's, that, I think, is probably one of its hallmarks. Okay. Now, Susan, I knew, know you're new, but can you give us a little hint about what the uh, uniqueness about your school is? Yes, our, our school is actually the only science magnet in Fremont, and it's a Gold Ribbon Award winner. Uh, they have a wonderful partnership with Math Science Nucleus, where over a period of several years we've developed really great lessons. Yeah, Dr. Uh, some, Buford is awesome. Some of which are, you know, year-long projects for right. each grade level. And that's ongoing work that's been developing. And in addition to that, our highly educated parents have a docent program of over 40 volunteers wow. that come in and work at the school. So we have an expert staff of uh, teachers, mm -hmm. a very educated and involved group of parents, and absolutely fantastic kids. And this year, um, we have 115 academic ambassadors in grades four through six who are working in um, science, PE, and computers uh, with their peers. Wow. They're also doing a student leadership newspaper that focuses on college and career nice. and they're focusing on doing community projects within the school mm -hmm. and building their capacity for leadership so I see this as a really amazing community school that has a tremendous potential for even more growth you got good people <laughs> oh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> they're the cream of the crop and I, I think you know it really speaks to not only what the school has already developed, but where each of them as an instructional leader, what's going to be the next step for mm -hmm. us? And that's going to be that excitement for them as they start in their career yeah. or start new in our district. You know, what, what can we now do where they're at and where they're going to take that next level? And that's the exciting part for them as well. Right. And for us to see that support and development occur at the, each mm -hmm. of the sites. Now, as a principal, i got to ask you, uh, most parents normally speak to the teacher only but should they want to meet with you just to get to know you because you know they were used to the other mm -hmm. principal how does how did they did they call you make an mm -hmm. appointment or can they just are you at parent teacher night or all of those things <laughs> call <laughs> email twitter um, school loop i mean we have lines of communication open everywhere we can if the doors open and they come in and there's time i'd love to talk to them i'm sure that's wow. the same for for yeah. everyone um, but you know, sometimes somebody might come in and want to talk, and there's something else going on or a scheduled event, so it helps to make an appointment. Um, but back to school night um, okay. at the the seventh grade maze day is a great opportunity to. I, I shook an awful lot of hands of new <laughs> students and parents coming in, and it's nice. it's wonderful to just be able to have that time and. Um, it also gets a chance to gear up the volunteers that we're talking about. You know, be, they, they'll say, you know, I'd love to help out anytime, and that's a um, perfect time. Oh, we, yeah. we have <laughs> spots <laughs> for safety and parking in the morning. Come on out. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Yeah, and I'm I try to be in the valet every morning and after school, and so you can have those thirty second conversations. And we've actually gotten some volunteers to help us in the morning. Mm -hmm. nice. Do you need some help? Absolutely. Here's a vest. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Same Denise is so right. I mean, that is such a powerful opportunity <coughs> in the morning um, because you know, we, 
we're asking parents to entrust us with their children for five hours of the day. And so seeing our faces as we open the door and, and help their children out of the car makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. One thing that I'm doing, uh, we have a lot of tools in our district, and one of them is Bright Arrow. Mm -hmm. Um, Which is? Well, Bright Arrow typically has been used for robocalls, for example, your child is absent, oh, okay. um, that kind of information. <clears throat> but I decided to go Roosevelt on it and make a fireside chat on Fridays. And so I send an email, a text message, and then a voice message from myself just about what's going on at Cabrillo, um, what are the, some of the things that we're um, encountering. It's received a lot of positive response. Is this to parents? To parents. So it's we use our student information system. All so your parents? All our parents. 450 families? All 450 families, but not, not one at a time. It's one, one right, message that goes right. out to all of them, <coughs> and we do it in English and Spanish. Oh, nice. And at some point, Dr. Zamora, I'll be doing it in Spanish myself. But for now, I'm lucky <laughs> I, have a, I have a Camille liaison who's able to do the translation. Um, so w we have voice message in English and Spanish, t um, text messages, because many people, that's probably the easiest way to communicate, and also to their emails. I do yeah, 1,100 yeah. individual calls on Friday. I see, just I knew it. This is what you <laughs> have to sit between us. No. <laughs> Seriously? No. Oh, yeah. oh my God. <laughs> what about you? I walk on water. <laughs> <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> well, like everyone else, uh, I'm very visible. I'm very much out in in um, the valet in the morning, in the afternoon, on duty all day, okay. uh, at the lunchtime, because children are the most precious thing mm -hmm. that we all have, and we want to make sure that they're safe, they're well cared for, they're well looked after. Yeah. Um, I think we're all very accessible. Mm -hmm. I know that I am, and that people drop by or walk up and talk whenever they need to, but they will also make appointments, and yeah. and that's, that's helpful too. That's good. But I think we all really endeavor to be there for, for each of our parents. Okay, can each one of you tell me one thing you want to change this coming year? Are we, we're, I don't get a chance. I have to start each one. <laughs> <laughs> one thing to change this year. I think really it's just about its shared leadership. We hear so much about that, but it's not the principal making the decisions, ah. whether it be community, Team. students, or okay. staff. Okay. So I think just really making it a community effort nice. to do and provide the best that we can for our students. Great. David? You know, I, I'll go along with that and then also add one of the things that I've done for Cabrillo. I think it's very important that the curbside of appeal of your school brings people in. So we have done a lot of work over the summertime and throughout this year really um, changing the appearance of the school. And it's made a huge difference. Okay, I got to stop you. Is that landscaping and painting and. Landscaping, things. painting, uh, cement work. Wow. Uh, t on Saturday, I'm going to have probably 100 to 150 volunteers coming at Make a Difference Day. Um, we're going to be working on our baseball field because that's the first thing you see when you come to Cabrillo. Right, right. And so I want that baseball field to look beautiful, even though it may not have a lot to do with academics. It's your first feel for my school. Yeah. Um, we have a garden area where we have um, many volunteers who are going to be going in with the soil, the planting, um, uh, with the irrigation systems. Um, going through the classrooms, cleaning inside the classrooms, just beautifying the school because I want to do what I can to make the school as accessible nice. for our community. Nice. Susan? I was going to say, in terms of the shared leadership, I think it's really important to develop the capacity for leadership in our students. And one of the things that we're really working on is making sure they have a voice in the decisions that are made and in learning what those processes of yeah success and leadership are and um, in addition to the newsletter we're going to be looking at publishing student books nice. and creating our own television studio so nice. those are some exciting things we're working on okay Corey, no pressure all right <laughs> <laughs> now, everything they said we're doing that I, i'm taking good notes here um i i kind of there's a, a lot of things that they're doing to, to touch on um the space itself like david was saying mm -hmm. Um, we're looking also at how to kind of modernize the facility that we have um, and we've got teachers learning like what you're talking mm -hmm. about with capacity building um, how to do things that our kids the world that they're from that, that they live in so we have moved our daily bulletin as a video bulletin now it's almost like mm -hmm. a little show nice. like we're doing here yeah. now and that's been very well received and we utilize um, district tools, the Google Apps for Education accounts that all the students have to be able to get that across to, to everyone. This is great. Well, I can't congratulate you guys enough. Congratulations on your new position. I know you're going to do well. 
good job in hiring these people. <laughs> That's great candidates. But thank you for being here. Thank From you. everyone here at Community Conversations, we appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next time. Thank you very much.